The word of God is very clear when it says that no one can mock God because a person will always reap what they sow. Unfortunately, it seems that many people continue to ignore this and even challenge this truth as if nothing could happen to them. And among these people is the American singer, Lady Gaga. In one of her recent tours, the artist thought it would be a good idea to profane the name of Jesus Christ in front of everyone. But what she didn't know is that terrible consequences would be waiting for her. In the book of Revelation chapter 22, Jesus said something about himself. Look at what is written. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Look at this, brothers and sisters. When Jesus said that he is the Alpha and the Omega, he is showing that he has always existed and will always remain until the end, okay? And maybe you don't know, but Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, indicating that he is omnipotent and lives eternally. And then, some people come disrespecting something so sacred, ignoring the holiness and divinity of Jesus as if he were nothing. So today, I want to talk not only about Lady Gaga and show what is happening with her, but I also want to show how some women are taking advantage of their fame, their popularity to mock Christ. The first woman, Rihanna. Just like many others, this American singer also grew up in a Christian home. However, in an interview given to a radio station, she made it clear that she is not interested in the teachings she received from her family about Jesus. Let's watch this excerpt from the video together. Why is your hand over your eyes? Because <laughs> I'm a devil worshiper, what are you talking about? Look at this. The host asked her why she makes a hand sign over her eye and Rihanna responded, Because I'm a worshiper of the devil. Mercy, brothers and sisters. And now, let's move on to the second woman who mocked Jesus, Oprah Winfrey. Oprah is a television host, actress, and American producer known for her talk show, the Oprah Winfrey Show, which was the most watched interview program in the history of television. Oprah is renowned for her life story of overcoming challenges and her interviews with major celebrities and public figures. In an old interview, she had already stated that Jesus Christ was not the only way to heaven, but this was not the only instance where she disregarded the Lord. In a talk show with host Stephen Colbert, despite claiming to be Christians, they made jokes about God, interacting with a computer-generated figure on a screen claiming to be the Lord. In the sequence, the false god claimed to be a fan of Oprah and said, I can't wait to tell Jesus. See how it unfolded. Oprah, Stephen, what's up? Hey! Oh, hey! Hey, God, it's God, everybody. Give it up for the Lord. Hey, everybody. I just spit out my gun. I'm sorry about this, Oprah. I apologize. Can I, can I help you, Lord? I'm kind of in the middle of talking to somebody important. Oh, I know, Stephen. I'm a huge fan. That's great to hear. I'm a big fan of yours, too, God. I really am. Wow. Oprah knows who I am? I can't wait to tell Jesus. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey 2020. Yes, she can. And now, the third woman, Madonna. It's no surprise to anyone that Madonna is one of the women who have shown a lack of respect for Jesus and the Christian faith since the beginning of her career. For instance, she was among the first artists to use the cross as a fashion accessory, wearing it in necklaces and earrings. Sometime later, she released the hit, Like a Prayer. And in the music video, she is seen dancing in front of burning crucifixes, kissing a black saint, and singing inside a church. The controversy surrounding the video was so significant that it was banned in some countries. But Madonna didn't stop there. The original music video for Justify My Love was censored on MTV due to its high level of eroticism. Madonna, angered by the censorship, created another, even more aggressive version, reciting verses from the Book of Revelation. This situation led to an appeal from Pope John Paul II, urging the Italian people not to attend her tour, scheduled to pass through the country. During live shows, the provocation towards Jesus Christ and his people escalated with simulations of exorcism and masturbation. Can you believe this, brothers and sisters? So let's move on to the fourth woman, Yvette Sangallo. This latest case is the most recent and happened during the last carnival in the city of Salvador, Brazil. While participating in Yvette Sangalo's trio Electrico, the singer Baby Do Brazil asked to share a message with everyone, saying that the rapture was very close and everyone should seek God while they could find him. Baby Do Brazil's words surprised Yvette Sangalo, who showed astonishment at those words. Later, the Bahian singer in a mocking tone said that God would not let that happen and that she would Makatar o Apocalypse, referring to her song that became a hit during that carnival. After saying she would Matsutaro Apocalypse, which can be translated as beat up the apocalypse, Yvette Sangalo, with an apparently changed expression, continued saying, I will sing the Makatando because God is sending the Makatando now. It's Jesus, Masatando. The strength of God is greater than any commandment, than any energy, because he is the greatest energy of all. And the consequences of Yvette Sangalo's disrespect may have been reaped 48 hours later during that same carnival. Yvette Sangalo's trio Electrico 
suffered a serious accident in Salvador while the singer was performing, and it almost overturned. According to reports, a carbon dioxide tube on the vehicle exploded, leaving two people injured. And you might be wondering now, Pastor, why are you only talking about women who mocked Jesus and the Christian faith? Haven't men done the same? Of course, brothers, many men have mocked Jesus, disrespected our Christian faith, but I wanted to bring female examples here to show you that just as there are women who hate Christ and mock his power, there are also those who love him, who surrender their lives to him and have their lives transformed forever. One of the greatest examples I want to show you in this regard is a woman named Mary Magdalene. The Bible says she lived in promiscuity and prostitution until she encountered Jesus, who cast out seven demons from her and forgave her of all her sins. This experience radically changed Mary Magdalene's life and she became a devoted follower of Christ. Assisting with other women in supporting Jesus' ministry, she was also present during crucial moments of his life, such as his crucifixion, and was one of the women who prepared spices to anoint the body of Christ after his death. She was also the first to receive the news that Jesus had risen, and she had the mission to announce this news to the disciples. In light of this, I want to show you, woman, that no matter the mistakes you made in the past, if you truly surrender your life to Jesus, he can transform your life and use you in incredible ways in the lives of people you may not even know. Amen? Therefore, be very careful about the women you look up to. What values are they conveying? What messages are they preaching? Are they bringing you closer to God or pushing you away from Him? Pay close attention to this, okay? And speaking of bad influence, I'll fulfill what I promised, and now I'll talk about Lady Gaga. I don't know if you're aware, but one of the most anticipated songs in Lady Gaga's shows is called Judas. Amazingly, this is not a coincidence, okay? The lyrics talk about a woman madly in love with a man named Judas, making several references to Bible passages and especially about Jesus. In one part of the song, the singer states that she will wash Judas's feet with her hair if necessary, making a clear reference to the passage in John chapter 12, where Mary, the sister of Lazarus, washes Jesus's feet with expensive perfume and dries them with her hair. Following that, in the song, she mentions forgiving Judas's lies and his three betrayals, referring to the three times Peter denies Jesus, and also alluding to Judas Iscariot's betrayal. Furthermore, Lady Gaga refers to the Judas in the song as a king without a crown, stating that Judas can kiss her if he feels offended. Finally, she openly declares that Jesus is her virtue, but Judas is the demon to whom she clings. Look at this absurdity, brothers and sisters. I've heard many songs that speak ill of Jesus that blaspheme, but none are as dirty as this one using passages from the gospel that exalt Jesus to compare him to Judas and saying she prefers the traitor over the Messiah is not only disrespectful and aggressive, but also blasphemous. But as we've seen, this singer is paying a high price for it. Let's take a look at what she did, and then we'll see what happened to her shortly after. Here's Lady Gaga in one of her shows. She starts singing, Judas, and then suddenly something very strange happens. Yes, that's right, she falls off the stage. And now you might be wondering, Pastor, could this just be a coincidence? Yes, it could be. But why did it happen again in another show? Notice that she fell again. It may seem like bad luck, it might be. Just as many concluded when Yvette Sangalo's trio Electrico had that accident in Salvador. But then, let me ask you something. Why do you think Lady Gaga fell for the third time in another show she was performing? Would it be too much of a coincidence? And why is it always during the same song titled Judas? As I said at the beginning of this video, no one can mock God because a person will always reap what they sow, right? So it seems to me that Lady Gaga is receiving several warnings, signs from God for her to stop this mockery, this blasphemy. If she doesn't repent of her sins, she will face a much worse consequence, eternal condemnation in hell. And I'm not the one saying this. It's Jesus himself when he said that those who do not believe in him will be condemned. So my wish with this video is that you, who are watching me, whether you're a woman or a man, can sincerely seek the Lord, repent of your mistakes and not play with holy things. Play with other things if you want, but don't play with the name of God because the Lord's name cannot be taken in vain, okay? Many people mock spiritual matters and later don't understand why certain things go wrong in their lives. It's because they give openings to Satan. When they don't want the Lord's protection, the devil takes action. And then, brothers and sisters, we know the destruction he causes. The devil doesn't play around. Likewise, God is not playing around either. Today, the door of grace is open, and anyone, whether religious or not, with a bad past or a relatively better past, it doesn't matter. Everyone should repent of their sins, believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior because He is the only one who can save us, amen. Jesus shed His precious blood. 
He had no sin, but on the Calvary cross, he died for me and for you to reconnect us with God, to reconcile us with the Lord. And I thank God because many years ago, I opened my heart, let go of my entire past, my prejudices, and truly surrendered to Jesus. He changed my life, and today I can have the assurance of eternal life because it doesn't depend on me, but on what he did on the cross. I hope you can have that certainty too, okay?